there's a bigger range of seasonal precipitation, the amount of rain and snow in the United States than you'll see in the rest of the country. A huge contributing factor is the occurrence of atmospheric rivers. Now, while conventional forecasting tools like satellites have helped predict their intensity and impacts, meteorologists are breaking through the clouds to better understand ARs. Our chief meteorologist, Carlene Chavis, explains. Atmospheric rivers are a major contributor to the annual precipitation here along the West Coast. It's a difference between a drought and a healthy water supply. Researchers are improving technology, also the flight paths to study these rivers in the sky, one AR at a time. The major operational goal is to improve the forecast of these extreme storms at a lead time of zero to three days and by zero days I mean like within the next 12 hours or so. And when you're talking about long narrow bands of water vapor that can hold as much as 25 Mississippi rivers and contribute to major flooding across the west coast, more detailed data is better. I sat down with Dr. Anna Wilson, the field research manager from the Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes. She also oversees the AR recon program. You may have heard of recon missions more closely associated with hurricane hunters. These less turbulent AR flights are different. For an atmospheric river, we're flying over top of the entire system. So in the hurricanes, they're often like in the hurricane. You know, they're not necessarily over top of it. You see those amazing pictures of the hurricane hunters when they are in the eye and you can see like up above them. The new missions will design flight tracks for each individual atmospheric river rather than track the same area over the Pacific. As previously mentioned, the recon missions fly above the swath of moisture. This has made satellites a helpful forecasting tool. But this only scratches the surface. Using technology like drop zones will collect data like temperature, moisture, wind, and pressure through the thick clouds of an AR at nearly four times a second after being released from the recon plane until it hits the ocean. So that's why we're using these observations that can transit through those clouds and make observations so that in combination with all of the amazing satellite observations, we can get a really good picture of what's going on over the Northeast Pacific. On average, the C-130s drop 25 and the NOAA aircrafts drop about 30, but up to 80 drop zones can be released during a recon mission. And as the saying goes, what goes up must come down. In this case, not only is it a helpful forecasting tool, but it's environmentally safe as well. The drop zones are biodegradable from the parachute to their circuit board components. They sink quickly and are covered by the ocean floor within a matter of weeks. We're trying to um, gather information to improve forecasts, taking care of people, economies, the West Coast, ecosystems, all that sort of thing. So we don't want to be throwing litter into the oceans. For News 8, I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis.